1 Corinthians, the ninth chapter. Beginning at the 25th verse. And it reads here. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Today's subject is game time. Winning with the purpose. Game time. When we look at different games, when you look at basketball, basketball is started off by a whistle. When you look at football, football is started off by a whistle. When you look at baseball, it's started off by the organ. When you look at boxing, it's starting off by the bell. In any kind of competition, there's always a sound that will release itself to let you know that it's game time. And just like in life, there are sounds around us that's letting us know that it is game time. But the problem is, is that when the sound goes off, we are still sitting there because we haven't realized that it's game time. So what happens is that our, our, uh, the pe person who we are competing against now has the advantage because we are not ready to fight or to play the game. It's game time. When we look at game time, you have to understand that you have to prepare yourself to get in the game. When you look at preparation, it is important that you exercise. Why? Because exercise increases muscles. Exercise builds new muscles. And exercise builds healthy lifestyles. So when you look at the process of building a muscle, the thing is, is that if you haven't worked out for a long period of time, that when you begin to work out again, you normally feel real sore. The reason why you are feeling sore is because the muscles have begun to tear off different tendons that was at no use to you. But see, the thing is, the muscle, the old muscle has to tear down so that the new muscle can build up. When I played football, the worst time in the season, I didn't, I didn't mind going to football practice. I, didn't, I loved playing in the games. But what I hated was conditioning. I hated conditioning because that was a time when we had to run more, you had to exercise more, you had to do a lot more, and it was no fun. But see, the purpose of conditioning is to get you in shape so that when time comes for the game to start, you are ready to face your opponent. And see, the problem with most Christians is, is that we always trying to be in the game, but nobody wants to condition for the enemy. So we learn all these cliches and we know how to act in church and we know what to do in church. But on the other side, we don't have no scripture in us. We ain't got no prayer life because we ain't conditioned ourselves to fight. So back to this muscle. Old muscle has to tear down so that new muscle can rebuild. And this is the thing, when the new muscle comes along, it comes back twice as strong as the old muscle that was torn apart. And see, understand this, that in the body of Christ, some of us have been old muscles for so long, and God is trying to condition us so that he can tear us down to build us up to a new muscle. But the problem is, if you don't place yourself in position to get conditioned, you will still be that old, raggedy muscle. 
So the physical side, the physical side, with exercise you build muscle. And it builds a healthy lifestyle. But on the spirit side, you have to look as a, mu as a muscle, as faith. If you want to build your faith, guess what? You got to work your faith. If you want to be more faithful in your everyday living, you have to learn how to let God condition you. And you got to start believing that what God said that he's going to do is going to happen. Understand that faith builds a healthy lifestyle. Yes, sir. Why you, why, why you ask, why you say that, preacher? Because many times in life it may look bad. But faith will give you the courage to believe that it's going to get better. A doctor may say no, but faith can still tell you yes. The judge can say life, but faith can tell you you're free. Faith. Then God was giving me this thing on preparation. One thing that you notice what athletes do, they have a strict vitamin regimen. Uh, I believe it's Centrum that says that they have every vitamin from A to Z. And whatever your vitamin is, if it's Centrum, if it's uh, uh, one a day, if it's even the little Flintstone gummies. <laughs> The purpose of the vitamin is to provide nutrition so that your body can stay strong. And understand this, even in the spiritual realm, you got to have some vitamins. <laughs> you say, what are those vitamins, preachers? The vitamins are the fruit of the spirit. You got to have some love. You got to have some peace. You got to have some long suffering. You got to have some gentleness. You got to have some goodness and some faith and some meekness and some self-control. Why? Because that'll keep you strong. So as we look here, preparation, preparation. You got to exercise. You got to have vitamins. And this is the last thing. You got to meditate. What is meditation? Meditation is focusing on your goal. When you meditate, you got to literally see yourself in a winning position. See, when you meditate, meditate creates strategies for you to overcome whatever obstacle you may face. When you meditate, it becomes a mental blueprint. And, 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 and when I get back into this, Many a times we're ineffective in battle because we don't even meditate on what we got to do for God. We have not created a blueprint. We just expect that it's going to work. But God is saying, you got to think about it and you got to let me deal with you. So you got to meditate. And, and this is what meditate would, meditating would do. Meditating will put you in a position to where you're speaking that thing into existence. Understand this, the Bible says that life and death is in the power of the tongue. Meditating will have you speaking the things that the enemy said that you can't do. Meditation will put you in position to see what God has got for you and make it very clear. When you meditate, it puts you in position to become a winner. So when we look at the text here, Verse 24 is about competition, <laughs> about races and running. One thing I found out, competition takes strategy. If you're going to compete in anything, you got to have a game plan. Yes, and see, understand this, when it comes to game time, you got a playbook that's better than every playbook. Vince Lombardi's playbook can't hang with this playbook. Phil Jackson's playbook can't hang with this playbook. You've got a playbook 
that at any time you can go and you can find any play that you need to run against the enemy. So when we look here, when we look here at the text, it's about competition. And understand this, I, I used to believe that competition was a bad thing. But you know, that was a trick of the enemy. Because understand this, the devil is competing with you every day. And if you don't find yourself competing back with the enemy, you'll lose every time. You got to enter into this thing like it is a competition. You got to look the enemy in his eye and let him know that I will not be defeated because I have God on my side. Is anybody with me on the day? Competition. So when we look at this verse, when we look at verse 24, it says, do you not know that in a race, all the runners run? Now, if you look at that text, it didn't say all the runners run fast. Because you got some runners that just can't keep up. But it says all the runners run. What clarifies you that you are in a race is if you are out there running. And understand this. In this game of life, there may be seven people on the track, and you may be the last one behind, but that doesn't mean you're not winning. That, that, that doesn't mean that you're not winning. Understand that you have to at least try. So we have the runners here. We, we have the runners here. They are presenting themselves in a race. And, and, and the, the writer says, run in such a way that you will get the prize. And then on verse 25, everyone who competes in games go into strict training. We already talked about training and meditating and preparing yourself. And he says that they do it in a way to get a crown that will not last. Can I talk about that crown for just a moment? Many of us are in races because it looks good on our resume. Some of us have even won some races that God didn't even ordain us to be in. See, while we're trying to build up our resume to look good to the world, we are distracting ourselves from the resume that God is trying to prepare for us. So you have to look at this thing like this. That God, if I'm going to run a race, I want you to be the goal. And see, the thing is, you'll win a lot of stuff in life. And when it comes down to you facing the Lord on Judgment Day, none of those races even matter. You can go to heaven with every trophy in the world, every medallion in the world, but it doesn't mean that you're going to get into heaven. Especially if you won every wrong trophy and every wrong medallion. See, the thing is, you got to understand that there is one race that is above all races. And that's the race of life and winning for God. So when we look at the concept of winning here, winning is simply a result of trying. You can't win if you don't try. Trying is just a result of faith. You can't have, you can't try if you don't have faith. See, this is what, what, this is what happened. Faith will tell you, I don't really know if I can, but I believe I can. Faith will tell you that I ought to at least try to get out of my comfort zone. Faith will let you know that there is some type or there is a chance that you can win. Yeah, yeah. And understand this, faith is believing with not yet seeing a result. Yeah. I thought about this, faith sometimes can be hard. Yes, sir. Faith will put you in a position to where you got to believe the impossible. All right. Faith will put you in a position that when everybody else 
is saying no. Faith is still telling you. Yes. Some of us have dealt with sicknesses and doctors were simply saying no, but faith was still telling you. Yes. As we sit in this building, plenty didn't have faith that we would be here. But oh, thank God that faith was still telling Pastor Star, yes. See, faith will allow you to believe when no one else believes. Faith will allow you to just hold on when it feels like everybody else then dropped off. Faith will allow you to hold fast to what God has said, even though everybody else said it was a lie. And understand, if you're going to get in the game today, you got to have some faith. you got to have some faith because you're going to face some opponents that are bigger than you, that are faster than you, they stronger than you, but faith say that you can knock them out with one blow. Y'all don't believe me. Y'all don't believe me. When you look at David and Goliath, the Bible says that David had five stones and Goliath stood up over nine feet tall. David, this little teenage boy, had faith that God was going to do exactly what he said. And with those five stones and a slingshot, David defeated a giant. And I stand here today to let you know that you too got five stones. And they come in a phrase that say, I will not be defeated. You got five stones that says that you can't beat me. You got five stones that let you know that whatever you're going through, whatever giant you are facing, that God is still in control. Come on and put a hallelujah on it today.